Hey guys, I'm Mike, and I'm in love with The Shape of Water. Guillermo del Toro's upcoming film is already generating a lot of Oscar buzz, and his story about a fish man and the woman who loves him has been a dream project of his for decades. Del Toro has been obsessed with the aquatic antagonist of The Creature from the Black Lagoon for his entire life. And even though his new movie isn't officially about Universal's iconic Gilman, The Shape of Water is about as close as copyright law will allow. So, I want to take a look at the original Marine Menace and how how it's followed Del Toro throughout his entire career with Guillermo and the Gill Man. Let's start with the classic look of the original creature from the Black Lagoon. The film was inspired by myths about a race of fishmen that lived in the Amazon River, along with the healthy helping of Beauty and the Beast. Disney illustrator Millicent Patrick designed the Gill Man even though she never received credit, because the studio didn't want it getting out that a woman had designed their terrifying sea creature. Patrick based her design on 17th century woodcuts of a fantastical fish called the sea monk. Originally, the creature was going to have a slimy, smooth appearance in the vein of an electric eel, but the final gill man sported a bumpy, scaly look instead. The costume itself cost $15,000 and was made from airtight latex. It was extremely hot and impossible to sit down in, so between takes, the performer had to rest in a lake on the back studio lot. When the movie was made in 1954, technology had progressed a lot from Universal's early monster films, but the creature suit was extremely primitive by today's standards. It had a squeeze bowl built into the arm to flutter the gills, a mouth that opened slightly when the performer tilted his head back, and eyes that didn't move at all. The Gill Man only appeared in three official Universal monster movies, but he left such a huge impression on everyone who saw him that he quickly became one of cinema's most famous monsters. As a young boy in Mexico, Del Toro learned to speak English through Forrest J. Ackerman's legendary magazine, Famous Monsters of Filmland. Famous Monsters instilled a lifelong awe of cinematic creatures in the young filmmaker, and the Gill Man had the biggest effect by far. As a kid, he was fascinated by the creature's grace and beauty as it pursued its prey. But he couldn't understand why it didn't wind up with the girl at the end of the movie. He spent days drawing the monster and its co-star Julie Adams eating ice cream, having dinner, and living together in wedded bliss. He'd eventually get the chance to give the Gill Man a happy ending, but first he had to turn his monster obsession into an impressive career. In 1985, he founded a Mexican special effects company called Necropia, and he soon transitioned into directing his own films starting with 1993's Kronos. Del Toro's filmography contains too many monsters to count, from towering kaiju to the petrifying pale man, but he's always had a soft spot for the gill man. No. That's one of the reasons why he jumped at the chance to direct Mike Mignola's Hellboy comic in 2004. Del Toro's favorite character was an intelligent fish man with more than a slight resemblance to the creature named Abe Sapien. Studying with Mignola's art, Del Toro and effects house Spectral Motion re-envisioned Sapien for the big screen. Instead of a gross green gill man, they made him smooth like a dolphin with gorgeous fish markings across his shiny skin. The suit itself was built around performer Doug Jones' unique frame. At 6'3", with a thin build and long neck, Jones seemed custom made to fit inside any kind of monster Del Toro can dream up which is why they've worked together on six films so far. The Abe Sapien makeup took up to six hours to apply after a vacuum form faceplate compressed Jones's nose and other features. You're in love. Have a beer. Oh, my body's a temple. The crew attached a face mask and neck pieces with Abe's animatronic gills. Each set consisted of three separate servo motors that undulated in sequence for the most organic animation possible. The makeup fits so closely to Jones's face that they couldn't stuff any extra mechanisms inside, so Abe's eyes and his trademark three-lidded blink were entirely CGI. For the sequel, the design was altered with different markings, a lighter color scheme, and a more muscular build. Fortunately, for Jones, Spectral Motion streamlined the application process while they were at it. In the first movie, the makeup left sections of Jones's body uncovered, which means artists had to painstakingly airbrush his skin to match the prosthetics. In Hellboy 2, the team built a pre-painted pull-on suit to avoid that problem, which also saved time wasted on applying individual pieces. 
Del Toro was absolutely in love with his Abe Sapien design, calling it the most beautiful creature ever committed to film. The Hellboy series is in someone else's hands now, but that doesn't mean Del Toro is over his fish fantasies. He actually had the opportunity to oversee Universal's doomed Dark Universe project, which would have included a reboot of Creature from the Black Lagoon. Del Toro wanted to do the film from the POV of the Gill Man, and when Universal said no, he completely lost interest in the offer. But this year, he's finally going to give the creature the happy ending it deserves, sort of. The monster in the shape of water isn't the Gill Man, and it's not Abe Sapien either. Instead, Del Toro's latest and greatest fish creature is known only as the Asset. For The Shape of Water, Del Toro didn't specifically do research on the original Gill Man. The classic design was baked into the entire concept of a humanoid fish monster, so he didn't see any point in trying to emulate it. Instead, he turned to nature for inspiration and based the asset's design on ancient Japanese depictions of koi fish with black scales and brightly colored stripes. Looking at the asset side by side with Aid Savian, they're pretty similar on a surface level. I mean, there's only so many ways you can design a dude that can live underwater, and Doug Jones is the performer behind both characters. I asked Doug to join the movie because he is an actor. If you don't have an actor inside that suit, you don't have a movie. But that's when the similarities end. Where Abe Sapien is intelligent, eloquent, and extremely polite. Forgive me, I didn't mean to start. The asset is an animal. It's a creature from the Amazonian wild, not a highly educated secret agent. Three decades. I've only completed two sides. For his performance, Del Toro had some pretty specific instructions for Jones. I said to Dog, you're gonna stand like a Toreador. Very masculine in the way they find their center. It definitely can't be easy making a guy in a rubber fish costume seem sexy, but if anyone could pull it off, it's Doug Jones and Guillermo Del Toro. Even though I do look freaky on my own, um, I do need help sometimes when becoming a fish man. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We're big fans of Guillermo del Toro here, but he's made so many monster movies we had to just stick with the fish. What's your favorite GDT monster? Hellboy, The Pale Man, Knifehead? Let us know in the comments, and as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.